So we are back at Lang Equipment today and it's gonna be a, a bit of a fun day because I bought a tractor and I know how to lubricate it, but I don't know a lot about the tractor. So I'm gonna ask Nate a couple of different things and then with my background in lubrication, he's gonna ask me a couple of things and we should get the complete story on tractor maintenance. So Nate, I get to start. What do I have to do? I own a tractor now. It's a, a series bigger than this one. I've got 10 hours on it. What do I have to do? Grease the pins. <laughs> Making sure that you have lubricant for the pins is going to be one of the biggest things. So I'm sure that you do that. But a lot of people don't know where to start, what to do. At 50 hours, you're going to drop your engine oil, your hydraulic fluid, and your front axle fluid because of the different types of materials that are in there from the manufacturing process that could be left behind. So there's detergents sure. inside of those fluids to get that out. I have a question for you. As far as the type of grease, does it matter what kind of grease goes on those pins? So it's a good question. It's a question we get a lot. And I always tell people the number one thing you have to remember to do is actually going out and greasing. And it's a little bit less important about what grease you're using. It is most important that you're actually following that schedule and going out and greasing. So if you have a good multi-purpose grease, you should be able to do this tractor front to back, no issues. And <clears throat> some manufacturers of grease are gonna tell you this grease for this, this grease for that, and it is true. Uh, just like any other product, we make greases specifically for an application. And that's a little bit more open-ended when we get into multi-purpose lubricants. We have a lubricant that people want to use across the board. So like on this, this machine right here, we don't have a mower. We have a loader and a backhoe. Yep. On something like this, you typically want a good multi-purpose grease with an EP additive. We're not creative in the grease world. EP stands for extreme pressure. In a pin or a bushing, you're going to have a lot of pressure. In a bearing, you typically don't have huge amounts of pressure. It's spread out evenly around that. Um, so in a case like this, uh, a good multi-purpose Molly grease or a good multi-purpose EP grease would do this machine front to back. Now, if you had a mower, then you got a little bit of a different situation where you're gonna have high-speed bearings. As this tractor sits, you don't have a lot of high-speed bearings on here. You probably don't have any. Um, if you have a mower, your spindle bearings are gonna be considered higher speed. So there you'd want, want to use a Molly grease. You'd want to use a good EP grease, multi-purpose. So when I look at our greases, if you, if you have a loop shuttle grease gun, if I own this machine, I would grease it all the time with G200 EP. Let's say you're a homeowner and you only want to have one grease for high speed spindles on, on here or do you get two grease guns or is it easy to switch out and you just pump it 10 times, wait for the color to change? How do you? I'm a, I'm a simplicity guy. And unless you're dealing in a very specific situation, we can get away with having one grease that's gonna grease this whole tractor. If it had a mower deck also? Yep. Okay. And so when I talk about extremely specific situations, I'm thinking some of our industrial greases where we have drop temps of 2000 degrees that we have to hold on to and you're not gonna get there with a, a, a normal grease. You need a, a specialized grease. Or you need a specialized grease a lot of times for sealed gear boxes and different things. Um, so if I was gonna grease this whole tractor with a mower on it and everything and go grease my trailer that I have and my truck and suspension and everything else like that, I would use the, the grease you pulled out here, LI400. Okay. Drop temp 525, extremely high, so it meets all the, the wheel bearing requirements, the GCLB requirements. It's got a really good pressure additive in it for pins and bushings, and it's rated for high and low speed bearings. So it's a general all around that we should use in a shop like ours where we do lawnmowers, we do tractors, those sorts of things. We bring in compact excavators, good for that. Yep, okay. we actually sell this grease commercially to lawn care companies all the way up to mining companies. So this, this grease is used on a wider a wider yeah. range. Are, 
are there additives or is it more of the weight when it comes to engine oil? And and so that's what I'm getting into. So like D what, diesel diesel versus gas. That's a whole other issue. Make sure you use yep. a diesel engine oil because yep. it's formulated different than a gas. So it's not necessarily just weight, but also. Yep. And and so what I was getting to there is we have 15 different brands or 10 or 15 different brands on the shelf. They're all somewhat different, but they're all made with the same building blocks. Same base oil. Yep. And so if they're all 5W40, they're all going to be made with the same starter 5W40. There's different grades of 5W40, but just take that out of the equation and say they're all made with the same base oil. If this is a $15 uh, quart, I was thinking liters, but we'll go quarts. <laughs> if it's $15 a quart and this one's seven, the additives in them are different. So if, you're, if your manufacturer gives you a specification of 5W40 with an ACI rating, whatever, whatever, you're pretty safe to go and find that requirement and use any brand that you'd want. Now I would caution you against switching brands. Like if you're gonna use and I'll just use our brand. So if you're going to use like a, an AirTech brand of engine oil, stick with it. Because the detergents that we use, the additives that we use, might not be compatible with engine oil B that you get for half the price. So if you're going to start with a brand, if you're always going to use Branson, always use Branson. If you're going to use AirTech, use AirTech. Don't switch what's on sale. The tractors ship with a synthetic and then we continue it. We use the manufacturer's suggested. I just wanted to know from your your point of view, because you are a lubricant no. guru, <laughs> um, how, how that would affect it. So switching between a synthetic and a non-synthetic, that spell disaster or, you know. With, without getting too technical, um, synthetics, are really good at reducing temperature. So if we if we broke down synthetic oil and mineral oil into their most basic microscopic level, what you'd look at when you saw the, the mineral oil, it would be like that in size. Okay. The molecules would be a little bit different in size. With a synthetic, they're all the same size because it's manufactured. We know exactly what we're manufacturing. We know exactly what we're making. Because of that consistency, synthetics run at lower temperatures so they're going to have the running temperature lower switching from a mineral oil to a fully synthetic or a semi-synthetic if it's the same brand if it's the same type of oil and when i'm saying type of oil i'm, I'm talking about oil packages the additive package in that so if we had just looking at our brands if we had a 5w40 rs full synthetic and a 5w40 rs uh, mineral oil they would be compatible back and forth. Okay. Um, and, and, but if you have a 5W40 full synthetic, just say X, and you have a 5W40 mineral oil double A, the additive packages in there are gonna be different and they could conflict. So I always tell people, start with something, commit to it, and, and stick with it. And stick with it, okay.